Hmm. Okay. What springs to mind when I think Philip? Uh, charisma, dynamism, ambition. Defiance. Alternative thought. Funky, groovy, danceable, relevant. Courageous. Fearless. Legend. Patriot. Pioneer. Funk. Sex. Africa. Resistance. Funk again. Uh, timeless. Afrobeat. The Groom. Phenomenal musician. By now, 2010, to we're coming into 2011, every black person should know about Fella. I was about 19, 20 when I first discovered Fella. Kind of it happened through other people telling, hearing the name and then taking a while to sort of track down the music. You would find Fella albums in the most weird places, you know, like I, I remember buying a couple of Fella albums, uh, Nigerian pressings, a bit rough, in um, a butcher's on um, Blackstock Road in um, Finsbury Park. I saw that album and I just bought it. I had never heard of this man. And then I think I got a copy of Expensive Shit. Um, and of course, you know, put it on and thought, wow, what is this all about? This is amazing. I was there for the whole 17 minutes. It was just huge musical epiphany. It was like time stood still. Hit me like a ton of bricks, to be honest. And then that was it. Uh, I just was like, what the f is this, you know? It really was, it, it completely blew my mind. I'd never heard anything like it in my life, so. That was the beginning of a 40-year addiction. <laughs> everything that I listened to before him felt two-dimensional, and everything that he did was, was completely three-dimensional. It was just this language of Afrobeat. I started to sort of realise that all the jazz I loved was in this music, all the funk I loved was in this music, all the blues I loved was in this music. The brass sounded so rude and harsh. It was not at all cosmetic, it didn't have the sort of big band jazz scene, it was, it sounded to me like, um, you know those great big trucks that fly down the highways and people lean on those compressed air horns and it's that sound that comes out. Since discovering him, if ever I'm feeling slightly down at all, you, you put on the bass and, and 10 minutes later, 12 minutes later, like your spirits are totally lifted. It just makes you want to dance, it just, and it just makes you feel at home. Just great inspiration, really, I think, Fela. When I remember Fela, I think of somebody that was laughing. He laughed a lot. He loved to laugh, he loved to, he loved irony. You know, his, his perception, the way he looked at life, um, there was this humour, you know, that uh, made one, um, you know, see things in a completely new way. I think Fella's main interest was stimulating debate, stimulating observation, letting people see things maybe they hadn't thought of. Um, he was always looking for ways of being uh, provocative. I saw Fella on stage, 19 years of age, with all his wives on stage. I was just, what is this? <laughs> I didn't understand. I didn't, even as an African man, I didn't understand. Fella was such a big character. I don't know, could anyone see Fella with one woman? I don't think so. There's a whole eroticism to set Fella's performance on stage that I'm, I'm sure um, it's not unique to Fella. I mm. think he was brilliant at it, but it's, it's, it's a phenomenon that exists on stage. And I think he captured that. And as a result, he had a huge female following. Um, and his status would suggest he could support as many women as uh, he felt he needed to support. He's a classic rebel figure in as much as he doesn't do the things that make uh, parents, say, approve of him. 
He doesn't do the things that make a bourgeois culture approve of him. Uh, I mean, I must have seen him about four or five times live, and the shrine as well, which was like the, you know, the experience for me, because the shrine was one of those taboos as far as my parents were concerned. I think there's some there's some old footage on YouTube that Ginger Baker took in the uh, in the shrine in I don't know when it was early seventies sometime. It just looks amazing, and you just you can't help but think, I just want to go there right now. That just looks like the most amazing gig. Basically, the shrine is like it's like third rock from the sun. Yeah, once in, you know, you, you just had a, you felt free. You know, you can be yourself. You know when you go to certain places, you can like see the air vibrating. You know you can see the air vibrating like that, and the atmosphere. Wow, man, what a place! They had to drag me out of there to go home. Oh, I want to stay. No, we got to go, Joe. We got work to do. We have to go back to the hotel. Security curfew. But I had the, I had the most wickedest night I've ever had. I think in the 1970s, Felicuti was just probably way too far out for most people to understand the music. Most of the music in, in Britain then wasn't that interesting, really. No, there was African music around at that time, but it was, it was quite sort of smiley and friendly, you know. It was, the, it was the sort of face of Africa that people liked. The only African kind of music that people over here kind of knew, really knew about, like, as I say, in a wide aspect, was Osibisa, yeah? Osibisa. But what I liked about Fella was that suddenly the other side of the picture emerged. It was a place that, where there was a political turmoil going on. You can, if you were to hear it in a club space, you could get up and want to dance to it, but actually if you sat down and listened to it, there's a whole load of what he's talking about and the history of the country that he's living in and the people that he's fighting against going on over the top. You kind of learned about African history and you learned, you, you were, as a white person, you were, put in a position where you had to kind of start to try and understand the, you know, the role of colonialism. So Fellow was a sort of blast of, a, of, a, of an Africa that I hadn't experienced as yet uh, growing up in Britain. It was the Africa of my parents, it was the Africa of my parents' generation. It was a pan-Africanist Africa that Fellow was speaking of. I think he spoke for people. It wasn't about Fellow. I think he felt the pain of his people and he wanted that pain to be understood and communicated to the people in power. Look, he'd put his balls on the line uh, for all his life and had suffered tremendously as a result. He'd pay the price for it. It's terrible. I'll show you. You must see it. Look at it. Yeah. Look at my ears. They beat the shit out of me. But I say I didn't die. Africa's always borrowed from music and, and always listened to music from all over the world, as well as originating music. So Fela is an embodiment of music that is international, the truly international music for me. I think people have people know the genuine article when they see it, and as, as soon as you see footage like that or hear some of his music, you know this isn't just uh, this isn't just the latest commercial fad. This is. This is a man kind of absolutely at the top of his game and, you know, the real thing. And there's one and only fella. I mean, there's never, there's not been anyone like him since. And that's what, uh, you know, stands out. If you're a music lover, I promise you, you're going to love it. Fella's music is just now right to be heard by younger people because it sounds so fresh. If you want to really hear actual dance music where you can't say no you have to dance then this is this is the music you've got to listen to whether you get an old scratchy vinyl copy or you download it from there go away get a copy of coffin for head of state and listen to that and if that doesn't move you by the end of it you know then you probably haven't got a heartbeat as far as I'm concerned music is the weapon music is the weapon of the future.